By default, frame generation in Ghost of Tsushima is locked and cannot be accessed on the Steam Deck within SteamOS. So I'm going to share with you how we can get frame generation unlocked easily and obtain even more FPS and performance. Let's close our game with the Steam button and exit. Come over to the cog symbol, properties, and scroll down to launch options. Here we want to type Steam Deck equals zero space percent command percent. Press back and let's launch the game. Now, as to why frame generation is currently disabled by default, I have no idea, as it works really well, as you may have seen from my previous video showcasing all the graphics. We get some stutter on high or very high graphics, but on very low, low and medium, we can achieve an enjoyable experience overall. I do want to confirm that although this allows us to enable frame generation on SteamOS, we still cannot access the multiplayer legends mode, as this requires an additional piece of PlayStation software, which will not install on Linux. I have dual booted windows on my second Steam Deck, and we can access legends mode with no issues on that side if you really want to play. I've left a link to that video in the description. Let's access options, display, and I know the text is a bit small, but there we go. Frame generation can now be enabled on the Steam Deck. And yeah, we can also use XCSS as the upscaler in combination with FSR 3 frame generation, or we can just use FSR 3 as normal. So it's pretty cool if that's what you prefer. So we'll try out XCSS frame generation to start with. And continue the game where we left off. So the loading times in this game are really fast. There we go. So we can see we're getting 70 to 80 FPS right now, compared to the usual 40 FPS. And it feels pretty smooth. Now there are a few extra options we need to make sure that we have set, so press the quick access menu button and enter the performance tab. We need to make sure that disable frame limit is enabled, and also manual GPU clock is enabled and set to the maximum of 1600 MHz. These settings will help alleviate any stuttering that you may be experiencing. Next. Let's access the settings, display, and we want to make sure that VSync is turned off. And also dynamic resolution scaling turned off as well. To maximize the FPS, I have the upscaler quality set to performance, but we can change this to quality for some more visual fidelity if we prefer. In graphics, I've got this set to very low, which you can increase up to medium and still obtain an enjoyable experience overall. So you might want to have a play around with it and tailor the graphics and also the upscale method to whatever your preference is. So I'll change it to FSR 3, quality. So we're using very low graphics with FSR 3 quality with frame generation and we're still getting around 70 FPS. Now this will vary of course when you change from different areas that might be more demanding throughout the game. So if you do intend on playing the game much longer then please post your settings in the comments and let us know what your experience has been like. Just to recap, aside from the launch command I showed you at the start of the video it's recommended to have disable frame limit applied, a manual GPU clock of 1600 MHz, and please make sure the game is installed to your internal drive and not your micro SD. This is due to their low read and write speeds.
compared to the internal drive. Make sure V-Sync is off and also dynamic resolution is off. And optionally, and I do have this set, we can change our UMA buffer in the BIOS to 4GB if it's set to 1GB to increase our minimum allocation of VRAM which can help on higher graphics settings. I hope this video was helpful for you all and please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more gameplay videos and tutorials coming very soon. If you have any questions please type them in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to you. Have a great rest of your day, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later.